Let's finish with a tree processing example, printing out trees. So I'm going to write a function called print tree, which prints the root value of t. And then for every b in branches of t, it's going to print those. So here's fib tree uh, 4. And if I call print tree on that, then it just prints out all of the values. But it's hard to see the structure here, where one branch end and the other branch begins. So let's see if we can improve that through indentation. I'm going to introduce a second argument, which has a default argument value of 0. And what I'll print, instead of just the root, is two spaces times the number of indentations I'm making plus a string representation of the root of t. Now I can multiply strings and add strings together just like I could multiply lists and add lists. So if, for instance, I multiplied this by 4 and then added a string value of 5, it would indent 5. And if I print that out, then you get 5 indented with 8 spaces, which is 2 spaces times 4. So here we've provided some indentation for the root, which defaults to 0. But every time I recursively call print tree, I can indent one more. So let's see what happens now when I create fib tree 4 and then I print it. I can clearly see this is the root value. These are the root values of the two branches. And this is a whole branch here. And this is a whole branch here. And if I had a larger fib tree, I could still clearly see its structure. This is fib tree 3. This is fib tree 4. And so the root value of fib tree 5 is 5. Oftentimes, when you create a data abstraction, it's important to create some way of visualizing the data structure that you've designed. And that's what print tree is doing for us here. So for example, if I did implement that increment function that I told you about before, which returns a tree with the original root value plus 1, and then uh, incremented versions of all the branches, I could quickly see the difference between fib tree 4 and the incremented fib tree 4, which just adds 1 to each value. 